the last uh, yesterday, the last yesterday, yesterday, we talked about transforming a random variable. So we talked about taking a distribution and changing something about it. So now today what we're going to talk about is what if we have two different distributions and we want to combine them into one? How do we handle that? So to start, we're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem. What is the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And when can you use the Pythagorean theorem? Only for a right triangle. It does not work in any other triangle. You cannot use it for a scaling triangle, an isosceles triangle, any other triangle. You have to. It has to be a right triangle. Got it? Cool. All right, so I have this question for you. If we have RML, it's a right triangle with RM is 8, ML is 6. What is the length of LR? 10. How do yeah. you know that? It's a All right, cool. So if we have RML and this is 8 and this is 6, do you guys know that the answer is not 14? Wait, so how do we know for a fact though that the hypotenuse is what we look for, right? And that the hypotenuse ain't one of all the things that they refer to? Oh, that is such a great question. How do we know that th we're looking for the hypotenuse? Because it's a hypotenuse. It's a dirt ball. There's no proof of that, bro. How do we know that? It's in the way that this is written. The M, the middle one, is always the right angle. Always? In a right triangle. I'm really bad at You've got to see how bad I'm at geometry. It's fine. You don't have to know that. Here's what you need to know, is how to use the Pythagorean theorem to find a third side, right? Why is the third side not 14? Why can't I just add 8 and 6 and get 14? Do you all know why? Why do you have to square them first? Because uh, triangle. I don't know. Triangle. Oh, it's a formula. It makes make rectangle. It makes square. Uh, Did you know that the Pythagorean theorem came from squares and not actually from a triangle? Not without any history. Did you know that it actually is? We're this square <laughs> and this square yeah. and the area of this square would be 8 times 8 which is 64 and the area of this square which would be 6 times 6 which is 36 their areas add up to the area of that square. That is where the Pythagorean theorem actually came from. And someone said, okay, so that means that before I can combine the two sides of a right triangle, I have to square them first, then add them together to get this area of the hypotenuse, but then I have to square root that to get that hypotenuse. That's actually how this was born. So, you guys know that you would just take 8 squared plus 6 squared and square root that to get 10. That's actually crazy. You guys understand now? Is this the hard one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, we're getting, woohoo! All right. So, yes. This flips math on its head. That would actually make sense. Ah, yes. Why is there a big square root there? Because when I add 8 squared and 6 squared, I get 100, which is the area of this big square. But to get to the side, I have to square root that answer to get to the side. Okay? All right. Here's the, new, here's, the, here's the good news, you guys. Statistics uses this formula. It is the Pythagorean theorem, and it is used for standard deviation combination. So, standard deviation is the square root 
of a variance. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance of a distribution. That means... This means we cannot combine standard deviations. We must combine variances. Standard deviation is a square rooted number just like the sides of a right triangle are square rooted numbers. So I can't just add them up because I would get really wrong numbers. Like you would get if you added eight and six to the sides of a right triangle, you would get 14, which would not be the correct number. So we have to combine variances. So here's what we're gonna have to do, you guys. If we are combining standard deviations, we're gonna have to square them, add them, and take their square root just like the Pythagorean theorem. So, the standard deviation of x plus y. Yeah. I have to take the standard deviation of the x distribution and square it. I have to take the standard deviation of the y distribution and square it. And then I have to take the square root of that number, just like the Pythagorean theorem. This would be 8 squared plus 6 squared square root of that, which is 10. We are getting this from uncharted territory. So ladies and gentlemen, combining standard deviations is the Pythagorean theorem for statistics. Now, what if I want to subtract distributions? <laughs> what might happen if I subtracted here? You wouldn't get the right number, because like if it's like Pythagorean theorem, you have to have the one that it goes to. What might happen if I put a minus sign here? I might end up with a negative number under the square root. And now we're into imaginary numbers. No, 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 no. You guys remember that Algebra 2 was a prerequisite for this class? And you learned imaginary numbers in Algebra 2? But guess what? Here's the good news. Stats is all about the real world. In the real world, there's no imaginary numbers. And so we cannot get an imaginary number for a standard deviation. How do you have an imaginary distance from the mean? I just do not know. You don't. Okay? So, guess what? The standard deviation of x minus y is equal to... The square root of the standard deviation of x squared plus the standard deviation of y squared. It's the same exact thing. Here's why. If I have a distribution that has a average distance from the mean of 8, and another distribution has an average distance from the mean of 6. I have two distributions that have some variability in them. And whether I am combining them by looking at the addition of their variances or I'm looking at the differences of their variances, I am going to always have more variation by taking two varied distributions and putting them together. Um. When I combine distributions, I'm always going to get more variation, which is what standard deviation is measuring. So even if I'm looking at the differences in their variation, I'm still getting more variation. So I'm always going to add when I'm combining standard deviations. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. So wait, so it's the same thing. Yeah. Same thing. What does it do? Same thing. Wait, it's that still sense? gonna be Pythagorean. So it's still gonna be. It is going to be to combine standard deviations, whether you're adding or subtracting. You're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. Now, that is only true for standard deviation. 
The mean is going to act exactly like we think it should. If we're gonna add distributions, we're gonna add their means. If we're gonna subtract distributions, we're gonna subtract their means. This is only for standard deviation, which obviously acts differently than mean, like we saw yesterday. When we are transforming a distribution and we are adding numbers, the standard deviation doesn't act the way it's supposed to. <coughs> Different, it's weird. Standard deviation is the weirdo of stats, okay? <laughs> Say that again. Uh, yeah, you can put 8 squared plus 6 squared, square root of that. Yeah, that's about it. You can't really, like, say, here's this standard deviation, here's that, now figure it out for me. You have to just combine it. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's look at some examples. Whoops, too far. All right, you know that game that you play at the, at the arcade where you shoot the baskets and you're trying to make more baskets than your friend? Basketball? It's called uh, like hoop fever or something. Basketball. All right. Hoop fever. Curry. Hoop fever is an arcade basketball game in which players have 60 seconds to make as many baskets as possible. Matthew and Lance play head to head every Tuesday. Are you with me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Let M equal the number of baskets made by Matthew and L be the number of baskets made by Lance in a randomly selected match. Based on previous matches, we know that the mean for Matthew is 39.8 and the mean for Lance is 31.2. Hey guys, on average, who does better? Matthew. Matthew, okay, cool. Here's what we want to know. We're going to define D as M minus L, Matthew minus Lance. Calculate and interpret the mean of D, the differences in their scores. The mean of D equals the mean for Matthew minus the mean for Lance. Why do I have a subtraction sign here? Because mean works exactly like we think it should. If I'm trying to find the difference in two distributions, I'm subtracting the mean. Wait, 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 wait. The middle one you're saying mean. The mean of Matthew. All right. Oh, I did write that as an as a mean, so like, didn't I? So like the mean distance between each of their things. The mean difference between their scores. So it's, like the it's just finding their difference here. Well, then you just subtract. And then we'll do standard deviation in a minute. Isn't that kind of like so all we're doing here is thirty nine point eight minus thirty one point two. What is the mean difference in their scores? If they play many, many games, if they play many, many games, the difference in their score will be 8.6 on average. Now, just for funsies, I have a question. What if, what if we had defined D to be L minus M. We would have gotten 31.2 minus 39.8, and their mean difference would have been 8.6, but a negative. But what is their difference in their score on average? Still 8.6, okay? But wait, doesn't the negative tell me something? No, wait, that one of them sucks more than the other. It tells me that the second number is bigger than the first. So this would mean that on average, Matthew scores more than Lance because it's negative and Matthew came second here. But here, the fact that it was positive tells me that Matthew, who came first, scored more than Lance. Make sense? But it's interpreted the same way. Cool? Cool.
What about the standard deviation? Based on previous matches, we know that the standard deviation for Matthew is 5.6. The standard deviation for Lance is 10.3. Time out. Who scores more consistently? Matthew. Wait, 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 wait. Based on these standard deviations, who scores more consistently? Why? His average distance is smaller from his mean, so he has less variability in his score than Lance. Okay. Now. I'm going to combine their differences and their variations and their scores. Okay? I'm going to combine their standard deviations. I should get a bigger variation. So, the standard deviation of their difference in their scores. I'm going to take the standard deviation from Matthew and I'm going to square it. And I am going to add the standard deviation for Lance squared. And then I'm going to take the square root of that. The Pythagorean theorem of statistics. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm wait, combining wait, wait, wait. standard deviations. Yeah, it's the we did it and I have to always add them because I'm getting more variation. This equals 5.7. 5.7 squared. 10.3 squared. Plus 10.3 squared. And square root all of that. This is going to be their typical variation in their difference. And what do you get? What'd you get? Okay. Wait, but like, the typical variation in their scores. Um, I wrote that wrong. No, we can we can fix it. We can fix it. The typical variation in the difference of their scores. The typical variation in the difference of their scores is eleven point seven seven. The typical variation in the difference of their scores is 11.77. All right, so here's the deal. On his own, Matthew has a variation of 5.7. Oh, yeah. Pretty small. On his own, Lance has a variation of 10.3. Sometimes Matthew is going to vary less. Lance is going to vary a lot. And so the difference in their scores is averaged about... 11.77 in a difference in their score. Okay? Okay, well, like, my thing is, like, wouldn't it, why wouldn't it be the average between 10.3 and 5.7? Because when I'm combining standard deviations, I'm combining distances that have to, they have to, we have to take into account the fact that they were square rooted to get there. So we have to always square them to put them together, to combine them. Because just like I can't add two sides of a triangle to get the hypotenuse, I can't just add two standard deviations because they were square rooted numbers to start with. All right. So here's what we have, guys. We have a distribution that is now combined. But what is the shape of this distribution? What is the shape of the combined distribution if Matthew and Lance's if Matthew and Lance's number of baskets both follow a normal distribution? If Matthew has a normal distribution and when I combine it with Lance's normal distribution, what shape do you think the combined distribution is? Normal minus normal equals normal. The combined distribution 
<laughs> of D is normal. Why do I care about this, you guys? Let me show you. Here is the combined distribution for Matthew and Lance. What is the mean of this distribution? 8.6. What is the standard deviation of this combined distribution? <coughs> now, if I wanted to know the probability that their difference is zero or less, couldn't I find it? How? Oh, you just do the area, right? No. I'm so smart, bro. This would be the probability that they have a difference of zero or less if I found that area. <coughs> Could I do that problem if I don't know the shape of their combined distribution? No. No. So your shape is going to be important. I, I know, I'm tempted. All right. Let's look at one more. Apples! Apples to apples. Suppose... Suppose that a certain variety of apples have weights that are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 9 and a standard deviation of 1.5. Mean of 9. This is a single apple, ladies and gentlemen. Each apple in this distribution has a mean of 9 and a standard deviation of 12. Does everybody understand that? It's a normal distribution with a mean of 9 and a standard deviation of 12. I thought the standard deviation of 1.5. I am just kidding. It's 1.5. You're telling jokes. See, I just make sure you're paying attention. All right. Each apple in this distribution has a mean of 9 and a standard deviation of 1.5. Are we good? Here's what we're going to do. Shh. Apples are filled... If bags of apples are filled by randomly selecting 12 apples, what is the probability that the sum of the 12 apples is less than 100 ounces? How are we going to do this? Right now, all we have is a distribution of... The apples in general, like of one apple. I need to get a distribution of the total for 12 apples. So like if on average, by 12. You're close. Yes, that's basically what we're going to find. So we're going to let X equals a bag of 12 apples. And what we need to find is exactly what Gabby said. We need to find the probability that X is less than 100 ounces. Well, what's the problem here? The problem is that I only have a distribution for a single apple, not for a bag of 12 apples. So couldn't you just multiply and like do 12 X? Here we go. The mean for X, a bag of 12 apples. What is the mean for an apple that I select out of this distribution? Nine. Nine. That's the first apple. I'm going to go back to this distribution. I'm going to get another apple. What's the mean for that apple? And what's the mean for the next apple? And the next? And the next? Okay, so you guys can already see. What, it, what could I do mathematically speaking here? Nine times 12. Because I'm adding, so it's not to the power of. I'm adding. Well, it's 9 times 12. 108. All right. So we're on the right track here. We now have the mean for a distribution of a bag of 12 apples. Here's where the craziness begins. How do I get the standard deviation? Bro, you just plug in areas. So you square 9 12 times. Not 9, but you're on the right track. Well, yeah, 1.5. Okay. What is the standard deviation of the first apple that I select? 1.5. 1.5. What is the standard deviation?
combination of the next apple that I select? 1.5 again. 1.5 again. So you multiply 1.5 by 12. But wait. Before I can combine these, what do I have to do with those standard deviations? I have to square them. Now, I have to do this how many different times? So this is where we get into a little bit of trouble mathematically speaking. What are we doing if I shorten this formula? Let's do 12 times 1.5 This is 12 times 1.5 squared. But wait, is that the same as 12 times 1.5 squared? No. This is where everybody misses it. They think that since they multiplied 9 times 12, they can just do 9, or they can do 12 times 1.5 and then just square that. Uh uh. That is not what you're doing, mathematically speaking. We also are not done yet. The square root has to be applied to the standard deviation of the combined distribution. What is what? So, if I, because I'm taking 12 apples out of the distribution. So I'm combining 12 of the means and I'm combining 12 of the standard deviations. That's where the goal All right, guys, what's the standard deviation of the new distribution of combined total apples of 12? 12 apples in a bag. What'd you get for the standard deviation? Here's our standard deviation. We do 1.5 squared and then multiply by 12. So here is the distribution of a bag of 12 apples. It has a mean of 108 and a standard deviation of 5.196. And as we said at the very beginning, we need to find the probability that X is less than 100. This is our old unit Normal CDF. What is the lower boundary? Negative infinity. What is the upper boundary? What is the mean of this distribution? What is the standard deviation of this distribution of total? This is going to give you the probability that we select 12 apples and we get less than 100 ounces in that total bag. I mean, it's really not that it's, it's, I'm going to show you what's I think it's actually pretty, we're, 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 I think it's actually pretty cool. Okay. What would you guys get for your answer? Oh, my gosh. Uh, 6.18%. Kick them out. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. They're not being annoying. All right. Here's where people do this wrong. They... Recognize right here. And they go to this distribution and find the probability that X is less than 100. But you guys, look. Where would 100 be on this distribution? So far out. So far, so far over there. And what would happen if I did 100 or less? What would I be shading? Like the whole thing. Like the whole thing. And what would the probability end up being? 100. Like pretty much 100%, right? 99.99999. And you know what people will do? They'll give me that as an answer. They'll say that the answer is one. <laughs> because they use this distribution. You have to trans or you have to combine them first, then find the answer. So here's the last thing you need to make sure you do. 
No, I'm just born to just. The shape of a combined distribution. If two or more distributions are approximately normal, they will combine to form an approximately normal distribution. If two or more distributions are approximately normal, they will combine to form an approximately normal distribution. Any other shapes are not going to form a normal distribution. <coughs> now, some people say, Miss Lakey, why do I even care about this? Here's why. If Matthew's distribution in the in the in the uh, example earlier was skewed left, and Lance's was normal, and I combined them, would I be able to find any kind of probability? No, because uh, any other shapes are not going to be I wouldn't have a normal distribution, and I cannot use normal CDF unless there is a normal distribution involved. So if you have shapes that are not normal or unknown even, you cannot do the problem. Wait, so then we're going to have to find out how to do it without the... No, we will not find out how to do it without them being normal. Has anybody oh, so to do it But here's what's going to happen. You're going to get a problem that says that the shape of the original is skewed left. Can you find the probability of X being greater than 100? And you're going to say, yeah, normal CDF. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to use normal CDF on a skewed left distribution. Don't do it. Don't do it. When are we going to learn it?